Hi everyone, Kevin here. Today I wanna to show you my favorite top 20 tips and tricks in Windows 10. If you're not on Windows 10, let's say you're on Windows 7 or Windows 8, you should really upgrade and you could even upgrade for free. I've included a link in the description. I've also included timestamps so you can jump around the video to the parts that you care the most about. Now there are lots of undiscoverable tips and tricks and I'm gonna show them to you today. So let's jump on the PC and let's get started. Tip number one, I wanna show you how you can use an app that comes free and pre-installed with Windows 10 to record your screen. And it's called the Xbox Game Bar. And yes, I know Xbox is in the name, but you could record things outside of games as well. To launch the Game Bar, go down to your taskbar and within the search field, type in Game Bar. You should see a best match appear for the Xbox Game Bar. Let's click on this. You can also launch the Game Bar by pressing the Windows logo key on your keyboard together with the G key, G as in game. When we click on this, this launches the Game Bar and you see the interface here. In the top left hand corner, there's a window for capture. This is what we're going to use to capture our screen. I'm gonna open up my browser window and once again hit Windows G to bring up the game bar and I can click on this button to kick off my recording. The recording is now active and I can scroll around my page, I can narrate, whatever I wanna do. Once I'm done, I'm gonna click on the stop button and now my game clip has been recorded. If I click on this, this will open up File Explorer and let's see how it turned out. The recording is now active and I can scroll around my page. If you wanna adjust settings for the game bar, simply go right back down to your taskbar and in the search field, type in game bar settings and you'll see a best match appear. If we click on that, this will allow you to adjust all sorts of things related to the game bar. For instance, you can set the shortcut key. You could also set a shortcut key to start recording. By default, it's the Windows logo key, the Alt key, and the G key. Under captures on the left-hand side, you can also adjust the quality of your recordings. For instance, you could set the audio quality, you could set the frame rate, and you could set the quality of the video. Now, is the Xbox game bar the best screen recorder? Well, it's not the best, but it comes free and pre-installed with Windows, and it does a decent job. When you're in a pinch, this is a great screen recorder to use. Tip number two, did you know Windows 10 includes its very own free video editor? How do we launch it? Well, once again, let's go down to the taskbar and within the search field, let's type in video editor. Who would have guessed? There's a free video editor with Windows 10 and within the best match, let's click on this. This launches the Photos app. Yes, it launches the Photos app. The video editor is built into the Photos app. Within the Photos app, we can click on new video project and this will launch us into a fairly feature rich video editor. Let me name the video something. I've typed in a title, now I'm gonna click on OK. Now it's a fairly basic but also pretty versatile video editor. Here you could add all of your different files, whether it's video files or photos to the project library. You can drag different files down onto your storyboard to start pulling together your video. You could add things like title cards, you could add motions, you could add different filters, and here you could preview your final output. Along with that, you could add background music, custom audio, and then you could export your video, and you could upload this to places is like say Vimeo, YouTube, Twitter, or Facebook. All in all, it's a pretty good video editor that's easy to understand and you can make some pretty nice videos. This is the successor to Movie Maker and it holds that title pretty well. Tip number three, I wanna show you how you could use emojis very easily on Windows 10. To bring up the emoji picker, all you need to do is press the Windows logo key together with the semicolon key at the same time, and that will bring up this. This is the emoji picker. Now, I have all my recent emojis, and I could go through, and however I wanna communicate my feelings and my emotions, I can choose an emoji that represents that. Here you see a very wide variety. All I need to do is click on the emoji, and that'll insert it into my document. It'll insert it into a comment on YouTube. If you wanna test this out right now within the comments for this video, feel free to leave an emoji. I think that'd be kinda of cool to see what emoji you pick out. Tip number four, this solves for one of the necessary evils. Now, we all know that it's important to keep your computer up to date, but it feels like oftentimes the computer updates at the wrong time. I'll be finalizing a video for YouTube, and right when I'm ready to start uploading or rendering my video, I get the message saying that Windows needs to update. Yes, I know you need to update, but please not right now. To adjust when your computer updates, let's go down to the taskbar and in the search field again, and type in Windows Update. 
As a best match, this pulls up the Windows Update settings. Let's click into this. Within Windows Update settings, you can pause updates for seven days. So if you're finishing something very important, just push off those updates. You can also change your active hours and the updates will not occur during the active hours and instead they'll occur when you're not actively using your computer. So for me, it would occur overnight. Tip number five, did you know that you can copy and paste multiple items? Now, these are probably the most used shortcut keys ever on a Windows computer. Control C to copy and then Control V to paste. Everyone knows it, everyone uses it. However, there's an even better way you can use it and you can copy multiple items and then paste multiple items. And instead of pressing Control V to paste, instead you're gonna press the Windows logo key together with the V key at the same time. I'm gonna press Windows V and that opens up my clipboard. I can go through my clipboard now and I could paste text that I might have copied. I could paste images that I might have copied. In fact, I could even pin items if let's say I wanna copy it and use it again in the future, but it won't be the last item or a recent item that I added. And then you could even clear the list. If this is your first time ever using the Windows logo key and V, it'll first off ask you to enable it. But once it's enabled, you now have a clipboard that will contain multiple items. Tip number six, you can very easily take a screen capture on your computer using an app that comes pre-installed with Windows 10. It's called the Snip and Sketch tool. Now there are two different ways you can launch it. You could go down to your taskbar and you could type in Snip and Sketch and that'll show up in the best match. Alternatively, you can press the Windows logo key, Shift and S at the same time and that will also launch the Snip and Sketch tool. Now I've launched the tool. You could take a rectangular snip, free form, you could take a snip of a window, or you could even do just a full screen snip. Here, I'm gonna take a snip of this window, and let's take a look and see what this looks like. Once I open it up, it brings it into the snip and sketch tool, and I could annotate it, highlight it, I could mark it up or crop it, and then I could export it as any file type. If I wanna add, say, arrows or text on top of it, I can copy and paste it into Microsoft Paint and then make additional edits. So a very nice tool, especially if you wanna take screen captures on your computer. Tip number seven is the calculator app. Now, before you laugh and say, really, the calculator app, it has a lot of advanced and feature-rich functionality packed in. To launch the calculator app, let's go back to the search field and type in calculator and click on the best match. This opens up the calculator app, and on the surface, I agree, it does look simple, but let me show you what all you can do with it. First off, you can now set the calculator window to always stay on top. When you click on this button, this will now require the app to be on top. So if I pull another window and back, there you see the calculator stays at the topmost layer. This is helpful if you wanna run some quick calculations with a browser window open, or maybe a PowerPoint open, or a Word doc. You can now keep your calculator on top. Next, over on the left-hand side, let's click on the navigation. Within navigation, you can launch all sorts of different calculators, whether it's a standard scientific graphing and so forth. And my favorite new functionality, you can run all sorts of conversions within the calculator app, whether it's currency, volume, length, weight and mass, and so on. Let's click into speed to see how this works. When I click into speed here, I can convert between kilometers per hour and miles per hour. If I click on this dropdown, I could select what type of conversion I want to do. Let's do a quick example. Here in the city of Seattle, the speed limit on the highway is only 60 miles per hour. For people who don't work with miles, you'll see that it's 96.5 kilometers per hour. And yes, that is a pretty slow speed. And in the city of Seattle, when the speed limit's 60 miles per hour, that truly is the max speed limit and no one goes above that speed. Also, just for fun, we could see that it's 1.33 horses. I guess that's somewhat fast. Tip number eight is dark mode. Windows is pretty bright, and especially when it's late at night, it might be nice to relax your eyes a little bit. So how do we turn it darker? Let's go down to the taskbar, and within the search field, let's type in dark mode. You'll see a best match for color settings. Let's click on this. Within color settings, we can choose our color. Let's click on this drop-down list. You can go with a light theme for Windows 10, which has been the standard for a long time, or now you could switch into a dark mode. Custom allows you to do a mix of the two where you could set the windows mode to light or dark and you could choose the default app mode to light or dark. Let's click into dark. 
This now changes Windows 10 to dark mode and all other Windows 10 apps that run on Windows 10 respect the setting that you select in Windows, so all of your different app experiences should now be in dark mode. Tip number nine, Windows 10 comes with a pretty feature rich, rich text editor and that's called WordPad. To launch WordPad, let's go down to the taskbar on the bottom and then type in WordPad. Let's click on the best match. This opens up the WordPad editor and you could do all sorts of things. You could choose different fonts, you could adjust the font size, bold, italicize, underline. You could even set the line spacing within WordPad. Now it has a lot of the functionality of what you might find in say a Microsoft Word, but the the biggest omission from this app is there's no spell check. Luckily, there are some add-ins that you can install. For example, there's one app called Tiny Spell that you can get at tinyspell.com and that will include a spell checker in WordPad. So if you just want a free text editor that has most of the basic markup functionality, you can do that and plus, as an added bonus, you can include a spell checker with WordPad. Tip number 10 is the magnifier tool and read aloud. Yes, you can have Windows 10 read to you. I don't know, maybe you wanna have it read a bedtime story to you. To launch it, press the Windows logo key together with the plus key. This will open up the magnifier. Now, just like the name says, first off, we could magnify on things, or here we could zoom in to see things a little bit closer. And there's also an option over here for it to read to us. So let's click on this and see how that works. Check out that, so my Windows computer is now reading to me. You could use the magnifier in any app. You could be in a web browser, you could be in a Word document, wherever you are, you can have your computer read to you using the magnifier. Tip number 11 is night light. Now one of the problems is as it gets late at night, when you're sitting in front of your computer screen, your monitor emits a lot of blue light. Now that causes your brain to think it's daytime and it makes it more difficult to fall asleep at night. Luckily, Windows 10 has a feature called night light which reduces the amount of blue that's emitted from your screen. To use it, let's go down to search and then type in night light and let's click on the best match setting. Within night light, you could set the strength for it. So here you have just the normal monitor with all full blues being emitted. And then you could make it so your monitor appears more yellowish or red or basically the absence of blues. Now my screen recorder won't pick up the yellow effect because it mainly affects the light coming from my monitor. But here you could set your setting and then you could turn it on and off. You could even schedule it so as it's getting later at night, the night light comes on and then the next day you could have it turn off again. Tip number 12 is quick assist. If you've ever had a family member who maybe wasn't quite as computer savvy, I'm sure they've asked you to help them. The most frustrating thing though is when you just try to help them through the phone and you can't see their screen. Luckily, Windows 10 has a tool called quick assist that allows you to connect to someone else's computer, see their screen, and even take control if you wanna just make some quick edits. To launch it, let's go down to the taskbar and type in quick assist. You'll see the best match for quick assist. Let's click on this. This. this opens up the Quick Assist app and you could either get assistance from someone else or you could give assistance. When you want to give assistance, you'll have to type in their email address and it'll also produce a code. The other person will receive that code and they'll enter it here and that'll allow you to see their screen and you even have the ability to take over so you can make changes to their computer. It's a very handy tool if you need to help other people with their computer. Tip number 13, did you know you could both enable and also disable startup programs? One of the biggest complaints is my computer gets slower over time, and one of the biggest culprits of that is startup programs. To modify and view your startup programs, once again, let's click into the search field and type in startup apps. You'll see the best match for startup apps. Let's click on this. This opens up settings where I can review all the apps that start when my computer starts. Here too, I could see the impact that it has on the startup. So high impact, that's gonna make your boot up a little bit slower. Low impact, it'll probably make a negligible difference. Here I could go through and you could toggle apps on and you could toggle apps off. Tip number 14, shake and then separately snap. So what do I mean by that? Well, let's say that I have this notepad window and my desktop's a little cluttered in back. I can simply shake my notepad window and everything else will disappear. 
but maybe it's getting a little lonely now. How do I bring those apps back? Well, let's shake again. When I shake again, those windows reappear. Now, what do I mean by snap? Well, I could simply take a window and snap it to the edge. And then once again, I could snap the other window to the other edge and I could very quickly organize my desktop. Now, this is also where shortcut keys are very nice. If I click on my word window here, I'm gonna press the Windows logo key and the left arrow that snaps it to the left. I'm gonna press the Windows logo key and the right arrow and it brings it back to where it was and then the right arrow again and that snaps it on the right. Tip number 15 is Cortana. Windows 10 comes with its very own digital assistant just like Siri or Amazon's Alexa and it's actually getting better and better over time. To use Cortana, you'll see a circle icon on your taskbar. Let's click on that to talk to Cortana. Now what we could do is you could do all sorts of different commands. For instance, if you use Microsoft To Do, you could add something to your task list. Add bake cookies to my to-do list. Nice. What's the definition of aardvark? Aardvark means... Open word. Okay. I'll open. There are all sorts of things that you could do with Cortana. You could ask what your day looks like tomorrow. You could ask for definitions. You could ask for the height of things. You could ask how a specific stock is doing. Just like with the other digital assistants out there, you can do much of that with Cortana. So it's worth a look and test it out and see how Cortana can help you. Tip number 16, you can open multiple desktops on Windows 10. How do we do that? Down on the task bar, let's open up the task view. When we open up the task view, this will show me all the different windows that I have open on my computer. And up in the top left hand corner, there's an option to add a new desktop. Let's click on that. This opens up desktop number two. So here I have my current desktop. Now I could jump to desktop two and I have a clean window. So maybe you wanna separate your work from your personal or maybe your school. You can keep everything in its own independent window. When I open up the task view again, if I no longer need a window, I can click on this X and that'll now close the desktop. And I'm not just limited to two desktops, I can add any number of desktops. Now I don't know why you would need all that many, but you do have that option. Number 17, you can very quickly launch apps on your taskbar by using the Windows logo key together with the number that represents the position of the app on your taskbar. For instance, let's say that I wanna open up File Explorer. This is the first app on my taskbar, so it's number one. I'm gonna press the Windows logo key and the number one at the same time, and that launches File Explorer. Now I have the Snip and Sketch tool in position number two, so here too, I'll press the Windows logo key and to the number two and that now launches snip and sketch so this is another quick way that you could launch apps that are on your taskbar tip number 18 you can add additional clocks to windows 10 when i go down to my taskbar i see that here on the west coast it's almost 4 p.m if i click down here i can click into date and time settings and within date and time settings i can add clocks for different time zones now my mom lives on the east coast of the united states and that's three hours ahead of the west coast so i could check this box to show this clock i could choose the time zone and i could enter a name and then i could click on apply now when i click in the clock in the bottom right hand corner now not only will i see my current time but i'll also see the current time on the east coast so this way i know especially as it gets later at night i won't call my mom after her bedtime Tip number 19, did you know that Windows 10 comes with its very own voice recorder and it works fairly well? Go down to search again and let's type in voice recorder and here you'll see the voice recorder app. Let's click into this. This opens up the voice recorder and I can click on this microphone icon to kick off a recording. I'm now actively recording. I could pause the recording. I could even flag a spot in the recording. So here I'm gonna add a marker. So let's say I'm sitting in a lecture, or maybe I'm conducting an interview and the person says something especially interesting. I can add a marker. Once I'm all done, I'll click on stop. This brings it into my main recording list. When I click on it, it'll play back the recording. I could trim the recording, I could delete it, I could rename it, or I could share it with others. A fairly powerful app that's easy to miss. Tip number 20, and this is the last tip of today. You've probably noticed from watching this video, there is a ton of functionality in Windows 10. Things are constantly being added, things are being refined. If you wanna see those changes before the general public, you can join the Windows Insider program. To join the Windows Insider program, go down to search on your taskbar, just like we've done with all of the other tips from today, and type in Windows Insider. Next, click on the best match option. 
This opens up the Windows Insider program, and if you're not yet a part of the Windows Insider program, you can enroll. Once you enroll in the Windows Insider program, you can choose what channel you wanna be part of. You have three different channels that you can opt into. You have the dev channel, where you get new features and functionality very early on, all the way down to the release preview channel where you get things a little bit later, but still before the general public. So it's gonna be a little bit more reliable and a little bit more stable. I personally like a nice mix between the two of those and I'm part of the beta channel. Back on the main page, you also have the option to toggle on and off whether you get preview builds. I currently have it turned on, so I'm getting some pretty new functionality before the general public gets to see it. All right, well that's quite a bit of awesome functionality in Windows 10. Once again, if you have a favorite emoji, feel free to leave it down in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you wanna see more videos like this in the future, make sure to hit that subscribe button. That way you'll get a notification anytime new content like this comes out. And lastly, if you wanna see me cover any other topics in the future, leave a note down below and I'll add it to my list of videos to create. All right, that's all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed and as always, I hope to see you next time. Bye.